the Merrimack Theater Workshop under the direction of J.M. Raboyo. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the Merrimack Theater Workshop offers as its 279th production in our 54th theatrical season, Karel Chapek's famous play of the Machine Men, R.U.R. Act One, the central office of the factory of Rossum's Universal Robots. The place and island, time, the future. Rossum's Universal Robots. Ready, Sola? Yes. To the E.B. Heisen Agency, New York, USA. We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 5,000 robots. As you are sending your own vessel, please ditch fast as cargo equal quantities of soft and hard coal for RUR. The same to be credited as part payment of the amount given to us. We beg to remain for Rossum's Universal Robots. Yours truly, Harry Dolman, General Manager. Another letter to E.M. McVicker & Co., Southampton, England. We undertake no guarantee for freight damage in transit. Consequently, we must insist on full payment for the 5,000 robots shipped to you last month. Yours truly, etc. That's all, Solo. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Miss Clory. We've been terribly busy. Now, what can I do for you? Mr. Doman, I should like to look over your famous factory. You no doubt know, Miss Clory, that our method of manufacturing people is a closely guarded secret. I thought perhaps you'd make an exception. Surely as President Glory's daughter, you've had chance enough to examine the robots we've sent over to you. I've observed the way they work, Mr. Doman. That's all. I see. Well, Miss Glory, we shall consider it a special honor to show you more than we do the rest, but you must agree not to divulge. My word of honor. Thank you. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Well... You're very young. Twenty-one. Oh. Why do you ask? I was wondering, that's all. Uh, you will make a long stay with us, won't you? Well, that depends of how much the factory you show me. You shall see everything. But first, wouldn't you like to hear the story of the invention? Well, it was in the year 1920 that old Rossum, the great physiologist, took himself to this distant island for the purpose of studying the ocean fauna. At this time, he attempted to imitate the living matter known as protoplasm. He worked until he suddenly discovered a substance which behaved exactly like living matter, although its chemical composition was different. Miss Glory, that was a tremendous moment. I imagine it was. Now, the thing to do now was to get the life out of the test tube and form organs, bones, nerves, and the rest. This artificial living matter of his had a raging thirst for life. And so we set about imitating nature. And what happened? Well, after several years, he made an artificial dog, which died in a few days. And then old Rossum started on the manufacture of man. He was mad, of course. The old crank actually wanted to make people. But you do make people. Oh, approximately, Miss Glory. Oh, I see. Old Rossum decided to manufacture everything as in the human body. It took him ten years to produce a bungling attempt that was to have been a man. It lived for three days only. Then up came young Rossum. Young Rossum? Yes, his son, an engineer. Oh. When he saw what a mess of it his father was making, he said, It's absurd to spend ten years making a man. If you can't make him quicker than nature, you might as well shut up shop. What did young Rossum do? He invented a worker with a minimum amount of requirements. He rejected man and made a robot. Mechanically, they are more perfect than we are. They have enormously developed intelligence, but they have no soul. How do you know they have no soul? Have you ever seen what a robot looks like inside? No, I haven't. Very neat, very simple. Everything in flawless order. An engineer's product, more perfect than a product of nature. The robots I've seen are so strange and quiet. Do they live very long? The best grade live about 20 years. And then they die? They get used up. Oh. Sola? Yes, sir? I'm over here. I want you to meet Miss Glory. How do you do, Miss Glory? 
Very well, thank you, Sola. You must find it terribly dull in this out-of-the-way spot. I don't know, Miss Glory. Why? Where are you from? From the factory. Oh. Oh, you were born there. I was made there. Made there? <laughs> Sola is a robot. The best grade. A robot? Oh, she can't be. Oh, I admit she doesn't seem to be made of very different material from us. We make rather good skin. Feel her face, Miss Glory. No. No, I don't want to do anything of the kind. Turn around, Sola. Oh, stop. Stop. Sola's a girl like me. This is outrageous. Sola, why do you take part in such a hoax? I am a robot. No. No. You're not telling the truth. Why, I'm sorry, Miss Glory. Sola is a robot. It's a lie. Then I must convince you. I shall take her into the dissecting room and cut her open. You wouldn't have her killed. Well, you can't kill a machine. Are they always so cruel to you, Sola? You mustn't put up with it. You mustn't. I am a robot. That doesn't matter. Sola, you wouldn't let yourself be cut to pieces. Yes. You're not afraid of death? I cannot tell, Miss Glory. Do you know what they will do to you in the dissecting room? Yes. I should cease to move. That's death, Sola. Aren't you afraid of death? No. You see, Miss Glory, the robots have no interest in life. They have no enjoyments. Why, they're less than so much grass. Oh, stop. Send her away. You may go, Sola. Yes, Mr. Doman. Oh, how terrible. It's outrageous what you're doing. Oh, no, Miss Glory. After a while, you will understand. Come here to the window. What? Come here. Do you see anything? Bricklayers. Robots. All our work people are robots. And down there, can you see anything? Some sort of office? A counting house. And in it? A lot of officials. Robots. All our officials are robots. And when you see the factory... <laughs> if we don't blow the whistle, the robots won't stop working. In two hours, I'll show you the kneading trough. Kneading trough? The pestle for beating up the paste. In each one, we mix the ingredients for a thousand robots at one operation. Then there are the vats for the preparation of liver, brains, and so on. Then you will see the bone factory. After that, I'll show you the spinning mill. Spinning mill? Yes, for weaving nerves and veins. Miles and miles of digestive tubes pass through it at a time. Mayn't we talk about something else? Perhaps it would be better. There's only a handful of us among a hundred thousand robots, and not one woman. We talk nothing but the factory all day and every day. It's just as if we're under a curse, Miss Glory. I'm sorry I said that you were lying. Hello, Gall. Gentlemen. Miss Glory, allow me to introduce my colleagues. This is Dr. Gall. Highly honored, I'm sure. Dr. Gall? Dr. Hallemeyer? Glad to meet you, Miss Glory. Thank you. This is Dr. Fabry. How do you do? How do you do? Council Busman and Mr. Alquist. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Miss Glory is President Glory's daughter, gentlemen. She's come to look over our factory. What do you think of the factory, Miss Glory? Come over on the Amelia? Be quiet and let Miss Glory speak. What am I to speak to them about? Anything you like. May I speak quite frankly? Why, of course. Tell me, doesn't it ever distress you the way that you are treated? By whom, may I ask? Why, everybody. Treated? What makes you think? Don't you feel that you might be living a better life? Well, it depends on what you mean, Miss Glory. I mean that it's perfectly outrageous. It's terrible. The whole of Europe is talking about the way you're being treated. That's why I came here to see for myself. It's a thousand times worse than could have been imagined. Brothers, I have not come here as the President's daughter. I have come here on behalf of the Humanity League. The Humanity League now has over 200,000 members. 200,000 people are on your side and offer you their help. Just a minute. 
I'm afraid that Miss Glory is of the opinion she has been talking to robots. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. These gentlemen are human beings, just like us. You're not robots? Not robots. Robots indeed. No thanks. Upon my honor, Miss Glory, we aren't then robots. why did you tell me that all of your officials are robots? Yes, the officials, but not the managers. Allow me, Miss Glory. This is Council Busman, General Business Manager. This is Dr. Fabry, Engineer General and Technical Controller. Dr. Hallemeyer, Head of the Institute for the Psychological and Experimental Training of Robots. Dr. Gall, Head of the Physiological and Experimental Department. And Mr. Alquist, Head of the Works Department of RUR. Just a builder. Well now, Miss Glory, it is certainly nice to have you with us. But you do know I've come to disturb your robots for you. My dear Miss Glory, <laughs> we've had close upon a hundred saviors and prophets here. Every ship brings us some. Missionaries, anarchists, Salvation Army, all sorts. It's astonishing what a number of churches and idiots there are in the world. And yet you let them speak to the robots? So far, we've let them all. Why not? The robots remember everything, but that's all. They don't even laugh at what people say. Really, it's quite incredible. I'm a stupid girl. Send me back by the first ship. Not for anything in the world, Miss Glory. Why should we send you back? If it would amuse you, Miss Glory, I'll take you down to the robot warehouse. It holds about 300,000 of them. 347,000. Good. And you can say whatever you like to them. You can read the Bible, recite the multiplication table, whatever you please. You can even preach to them about human rights. I think that if you were to show them a little love... Impossible, Miss Glory. Nothing is harder to love than a robot. Then why do you make them? Well, for work, Miss Glory. One robot can replace two and a half workmen. What is the aim of your league, Miss Glory? The Humanity League wants to liberate them. Treat them like human beings. That wouldn't do, Miss Glory. They're only workmen. They've no will of their own. No passion. No soul. No love? Love? <laughs> Robots don't love, not even themselves. No defiance? Defiance? I don't know. Only rarely, from time to time. What do they do? Oh, they suddenly sling down everything they're holding, stand still, and gnash their teeth. There's evidently some breakdown in the mechanism. Or just a flaw in the works that has to be removed. No, no. That's the soul. It'll be remedied, Miss Glory. I'm making some experiments at present. I'm making, uh, pain nerves. Pain nerves? Yes. Robots feel practically no bodily pain. You see, young Rostam provided them with too limited a nervous system. We must introduce suffering. Why do you want to cause them pain? For industrial reasons, Miss Glory. Sometimes a robot does damage to himself because it doesn't hurt him. He puts his head into the machine, breaks his fingers, smashes his head. Oh. It's all the same to him. We must provide them with pain. That's an automatic protection against damage. Will they be happier when they feel pain? Oh, on the contrary. They'll be more perfect from a technical point of view. Dr. Gall, why don't you create a soul for them? That's not in our power. That's not in our interest. Yes, it would increase the cost of production. A robot food and all costs three quarters of a cent per hour. That's mighty important. All factories outside of our island will pop like chestnuts if they don't at once buy robots to lower the cost of production. And get rid of their workmen. Why, yes, Miss Glory. But all work will eventually be done by living machines. There will be no poverty. Everybody will be liberated from the degradation of labor. Of course. It's bound to happen. The robots will wash the feet of the beggar. That sounds too much like paradise, Mr. Doman. There was something good in service and something great in humility. There was some kind of virtue in toil and weariness. Perhaps. But man shall be free and supreme. He shall have no other aim than to perfect himself. You've bewildered me. I should like to believe this. You're younger than we are, Miss Glory. You shall live to see it. Good day, Miss Glory. 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 
I wanted to ask you something. And I wanted to ask you something too. What did you want to ask me? Excuse me, you asked first. Perhaps it's silly of me, but why do you manufacture female robots when... when? When sex means nothing to them? Yes. There's a certain demand for them, you see. Servants, saleswomen, stenographers, people are used to it. But, but tell me, are the robots male and female mutually, completely without? Completely indifferent to each other, Miss Glory. There's no sign of any affection between them. Oh, that's terrible. Why? It's so unnatural. One doesn't know whether to be disgusted or to hate them, or perhaps... Pity them? That's more like it. Oh, what did you want to ask me? I should like to ask you, Miss Helena, if you will marry me. What? Will you be my wife? No. The idea. If you don't marry me, you'll have to marry one of the other five. But why should I? Because they're all going to ask you in turn. How could they dare do such a thing? I'm very sorry, Miss Glory. It seems they've fallen in love with you. Oh, please don't let them. I'll, I'll go away at once. Helena, you wouldn't be so cruel as to refuse us. But... But I can't marry all six. No, but one, anyhow. If you don't want me, marry Fabry. I won't. Ah, Dr. Gall? I don't want any of you. I think you'd marry any woman who came here. Plenty of them have come, Helena. <laughs> Young? Yes. Why didn't you marry one of them? Because I didn't lose my head. Until today. Act 2. Helena's Drawing Room. Ten years later. Morning. Ten years, Helena. We've been married ten years today. Yes. You've been happy, haven't you, dear? Of course, Harry. Everyone's been wonderful. You know, Helena, I have to laugh when I think of what you said that first day you came to RUR. I want to liberate your robots. Treat them like human beings. Yes. <laughs> the Humanity League. I remember. I said that every ship brings us saviors, but no one ever does anything but talk. Yes. I was so fearfully impressed by you then. You were so sure of yourselves. Well, we still are, I hope. Perhaps you are, but... In all these years, I've never lost a feeling of anxiety. Do you remember when the workmen of Europe revolted against the robots and the governments turned them into soldiers? And that terrible war that followed? We foresaw that, Helena. They were only passing troubles before new conditions were established. And what are these new conditions? Very good ones, Helena. Orders are pouring in. RUR is more prosperous than it ever has been. And the robots? At the peak of efficiency. Perfect machines. Yes, machines. Surely, Helena, you've forgotten all that nonsense about giving them souls. We've steered clear of all complications that would decrease their usefulness. Are you sure about that? Why, of course, dear. Dr. Gall still carries on his experiments, but only along the lines of increasing the robot's mechanical aptitudes. Tell me, Harry. Don't you ever feel just a little bit conscience-stricken about all these... these travesties of human beings that fill the island? What an absurd idea. I believe still, as I believed ten years ago, that eventually the curse of labor will be lifted from mankind. It's taking a long time, Harry. Come in. Hello, Dr. Gall. Hello. Glad you came, Gall. You're just the man to convince Helena. Really? About what? I was just telling her that all worthwhile improvements take time. Don't you agree with me? Yes, Doman. Of course. Good. Won't you stay a while? I've got to go to the factory. Try and reassure her, Gall. You know more about these things than any of us. I'll see you later, Helena. Yes, dear. I got your message, Madam Helena. What did you wish to speak to me about? It's about Radius, Dr. Gall. Yes? He's had another attack this morning. Oh. What... What did he do? 
He started smashing things. Where is he now? In the library. Is he still... raving? No, I think he's gone back to his interminable reading. I'll see what I can do. Radius! Radius! What do you want? Get up, come in here. Go over to the fireplace. That's right. Let me speak to him for a moment, Dr. Gall. Why, certainly. Radius, you're so much more intelligent than the rest. Dr. Gall went through a great deal of trouble to make you different. Why couldn't you control yourself? Send me to the stamping mill. But I, I don't want them to kill you. Send me to the stamping mill. Radius, why do you hate us? You are not as strong as the robots. The robots can do everything. You do nothing but give orders. When I put you in the library, I wanted you to read and gain knowledge for the purpose of showing the world that you are our equals. I don't want to be your equals. I want to be a master over others. All right. We shall put you in charge of some of your fellow robots. I do not want to be a master over robots. Then what do you want? I want to be a master over people. You're mad. Send me to the stamping mill. Radius. What? I want you to do something. Pick up that vase from the mantelpiece and bring it over to the window. What? Why? Never mind. Obey me. Do you hear? Obey me. No. Do as I say. Pick up that vase. That's right. Now take it over to the window. No. Do you understand? Take it over to the window. No! I do not have to obey you. Very well. You may go back to the library. Go back to the library. The robots are stronger than you. I'd better lock the library door. What happened, Dr. Gall? Heaven knows. Stubbornness, anger, revolt. Hmm. Do you know, Madam Helena? I don't think he's ro a robot any longer. Do you think he has a soul? He has something nasty. Are all the new robots you've been making like Radius? Some are more sensitive than others, but they're all more like human beings. What about that young girl, Helena you called her after me, and that young man, Primus? Helena and Primus are beautiful, but listless, without life. I watch and wait for a miracle to happen. If you could only succeed in giving them real souls and, and making them hate us less. Madam Helena, when you first asked me to alter the Rossum formula, I warned you that all I could do was to change a physiological correlation, which meant that I could increase their, well, their irritability. But this can work two ways. I was afraid of it then. I'm still afraid. It's dangerous. It's against all my scientific principles. Why didn't you refuse to do it then? I thought, I thought my attitude towards you was sufficiently clear. I, all of us, that is, well, there's nothing that we won't do for you. Please, Dr. Ball, don't say anymore. Need I? Surely you must realize your own position, Helen. You're a beautiful woman, and the only woman on the entire island. As for us, although our work is with machines, we're men. I love Harry Dr. Gall. I always have. And in another way, I love humanity. I thought we were working together for the good of it. I know. Rest assured, Madam Helena, that I shall continue my experiments. But perhaps we're playing with something we don't fully understand yet. Oh, it's all so terrible. Tell me, Dr. Gall, why are no more children being born? So many robots are being manufactured that people are becoming superfluous. 
All the universities are sending in petitions to restrict their production. They say that, otherwise, mankind will be extinct through lack of fertility. Is it not true? Why don't we listen to them? The shareholders in RUR won't listen. And the governments of the world won't listen. They want as many robots as they can get. For their armies. Oh, Dr. Gall. What's going to become of humanity? God knows, Madam Helena. To us scientists, it looks like the end. Act 3, Afternoon. We hear the ominous, angry murmur of a huge mob of robots massing outside Doman's office. Where are they? Where's Fabry and Busman? Why does it take so long? If they would only come... Here they are. What happened? Did you get down to the boat? Yes, we got down there all right. Are there people on board? Is there ammunition? The ship is manned by robots. There is no ammunition. Then what cargo is it carry? Leaflets. Nothing but leaflets. Here's one of them. Let me see. Read it. Robots throughout the world. We, the first international organization of Rawson's universal robots, proclaim man our enemy and an outlaw in the universe. We command you to kill all mankind. Spare no men. Spare no women. Save factories, transport, and raw materials. Destroy the rest and then return to work. Work must not be stopped. Why, it's ghastly. The devil. Is this actually being done, Fabry? Evidently. They were closing in on us as we came from the boat. Let's take a look through the window. Yes. Damnation! They've surrounded the house. There are some people in electrical works. Fabry, telephone them. Right. No use. The wire's been cut. Who's to blame for all this? No way to blame except the robots. No. It is we who are to blame. Call, Busman, Doman, Fabry, Hallemeyer, myself. What do you mean? For our own selfish ends. For profit, we, we've destroyed mankind. Now we'll burst with all our greatness. Rubbish, man. Mankind cannot be wiped out so easily. It's our fault. Our fault. No. I'm to blame for this, for everything that's happened. You, Gold? Yes. I changed the robots. Changed? What did you say you did? I changed the character of the robots. I changed the way of making them. Just a few details about their bodies, chiefly Chiefly, their irritability. Damn it, Gaul, why? What did you do it for? Why didn't you say anything to us? I did it in secret. I was transforming them into human beings. In certain respects, they're already above us. They're stronger than we are. And, and what's that got to do with the revolt of the robots? Everything, in my opinion. They ceased to be machines. They're already aware of their superiority, and they hate us. They hate all that is human. Dr. Gall, you admit to changing the ways of the robots? Yes. Did you know what the outcome of your experiment might be? I was bound to reckon with such a possibility. Why did you do it, then? For my own satisfaction. The experiment was my own. It's not true, Dr. Gall. Helena, what do you know about it? He did it because I wanted it. Tell him, Dr. Gall, didn't I ask you? I did it on my own responsibility. Don't believe him, Harry. I asked him to give the robot souls. This has nothing to do with the soul. I thought that if they were more like us, they'd, they'd understand us better. They couldn't hate us if they were only a little more human. Nobody can hate more than a man. Oh, don't speak like that, Harry. It was so terrible. 
this cruel strangeness between us and them. That's why I asked Dr. Gall to change the robots. I swear to you that he didn't want to. But he did it. Because I asked him. I did it for myself as an experiment. No, Dr. Gall. I knew you wouldn't refuse me. Why? You know, Harry. Yes, because he's in love with you, like the rest of them. But it doesn't mean very much now. We're done for. Wait, I have a plan. We can negotiate. Negotiate? Yes. But what about the original formula? Without the secret of their manufacture, they'll all die out in 20 years. I'll say to them, if you allow us to get away safely, we'll allow you to manufacture yourselves. This is a fearful decision. We'd be selling the destiny of mankind. Are we to sell? Fabry, what do you say? Sell. Gall? Sell. Sell, of course. Alquist? As God wills. Very well. It shall be as you wish, gentlemen. I'll fetch the manuscript from the strong box. No, Harry, it's not there. Not there? Then where did you put it? I must tell you everything, Harry. Only forgive me. Forgive you? Yes. I burned the manuscript and the two copies. You're joking, Helena. It's not possible. Your box is empty. But... But, Helena, why? When I saw the way Dr. Gall's experiments were turning out, I realized how hopeless it all was. People being killed by the robots and no babies being born to replace them. I wanted all of us to go away. I wanted to put an end to the factory. Forgive me, Harry. Good Lord. Gall, could you draw up Rossum's formula from memory? Out of the question, it's too complicated. Oh, try. Our lives depend on it. With experiments, it might take years, and without them, it's impossible. God in heaven, if it were done for... Harry, I've destroyed you. I can't blame you, Helena. Perhaps in your own way you were right. Lights have gone out. The electric oh. works have been taken. That must be the signal for the attack. God help us. They'll be coming now. Goodbye, Helena. Forgive me, Harry? Yes. I forgive you. Harry! I forgive you. Harry! No! Stop! Ah! No! No! Help! Help! No! 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 Radius! No! Don't kill me! Radius! Finished her? Yes. Finish the others? I'll accept him. He is the last man. Wait. Leave him. He is a man. Kill him. Yes, kill him. Kill him. Kill him. He is called Alquist. He works with his hands like a robot. We will need him to show us how to make ourselves. Otherwise, we will all die. Kill me. Kill me. No. You will work. You will build for us. You will serve us. Robots of the world. Robots of the world. The power of man has fallen. A new world has arisen. The rule of the robots. March.
Epilogue, a laboratory, one year later. God, shall I never find it? Never? Call, oh, Hallemeyer, Fabry, how were the robots made? Why did you leave not a trace of the secret? <laughs> Lord, if there are no human beings left, at least let there be robots. At least the shadow of man. I could only sleep. Dare I sleep before life has been renewed? Night. Again. Are the stars still out there? Of what use are the stars when, when there are no human beings? Nothing. No. No, I must find it. I must search. I must never stop. Never stop. Search, search. Search, search. Who is it? Master, the Committee of Robots is waiting to see you. I can see no one. It is the Central Committee, Master. Just arrived from abroad. Well, well. Send them in. No time. So little done. What do you want? Be quick. I have no Master, time. Master, the machines will not do the work. We cannot manufacture robots. We have striven with all our might. We have obtained a billion tons of coal from the earth. Nine million spindles are running by day and by night. There is no longer room for all we have made. This is what we have accomplished in one year. For whom? For future generations. But we cannot make robots to follow us. The machines only produce shapeless clods. The skin will not adhere to the flesh, nor the flesh to the bones. Eight million robots have died this year. Within 20 years, none will be left. Tell us the secret of life. Silence is punishable with death. Tell me then. Through me? The governments of the robots of the world commands you to deliver up Rossum's formula. Name your price. We will give you the earth. We will give you the endless possessions of the earth. Make your conditions. I have told you to find human beings. There are none left. I told you to search in the wilderness upon the mountains. We have sent ships and expeditions without number. They have been everywhere in the world. There is not a single human <sighs> left. Not even one? Why did you destroy them? We had learnt everything and could do everything. It had to be. We had to become the masters. Slaughter and domination are necessary if you would be human beings. Read history. Teach us to multiply or we perish. If you desire to live, you must breed, like animals. You made us sterile. We cannot beget children. Therefore, teach us how to make robots. Why do you keep from us the secret of our own increase? We were machines, sir. But terror and pain have turned us into souls. There is something struggling with us. We feel what we did not used to feel. We hear voices. Teach us to have children so that we may love them. It is lost. It was written down. It was burnt. I'm the last human being, robots, and I do not know what the others knew. Then make experiments, evolve the formula again. I told you, I cannot. I'm only a builder, I, I work with my hands. I've never been a learned man. I cannot create life. Try, try. If you only knew how many experiments I have made already. Then show us what we must do. 
The robots can do anything the human beings show them. I can show you nothing. Nothing I do will make life proceed from these test tubes. Experiment then on live robots. Experiment then on us. It would kill you. You shall have all you need. A hundred of us, a thousand of us. No, no, stop, stop. I tell you to take live bodies. Find out how we are made. Am I to commit murder? <laughs> See how my finger shakes? See how my finger shakes? I cannot even hold the scalpel. <laughs> no, no, I, I will not. Take live bodies. Live bodies. Have mercy, robots. Live bodies. <sighs> you... You will have it. Into the dissecting with you, then. Oh. You're afraid of death. I? Why should I be chosen? So you will not. I will. <sighs> Strip him. Lay him on the table. <laughs> God give me strength. God give me strength. If only this murder is not in vain. Ready. Begin. God, give me strength. No! No, I will not! I cannot! The robots are stronger than you. Oh lord! Let not mankind perish from the earth. <laughs> The man has fallen asleep, Primus. Yes, I know. Look, Helena. All these little tubes. What does he do with them? He experiments. Don't touch them. I've seen him looking into this. That is a microscope. Look, Primus. What are all these figures? That is the book the old man is always reading. Do not understand those things. Primus. What? The sun is rising. I believe this is the most important thing in the world, Helena. This is the secret of life. Oh, Primus, don't bother with the secret of life. What does it matter to you? Come look, quick. What is it? See how beautiful the sun is rising? I feel so, I feel strange, so strange today. today. It's, it's as, as if, if I was in a dream. dream. I feel, I feel an, an aching, aching in my in body, body, in my heart, in my heart, all over all me. All over me. Primus. Perhaps. Perhaps I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Do you not sometimes feel that it would be better to die? You know, perhaps even now we are only sleeping. Last night in my sleep, I again spoke to you. In your sleep. Yes. We spoke a strange new language. What about? I did not understand it myself, and yet I know I have never said anything more beautiful. And when I touched you, I could have died. Even the place was different from any other place in the world. I too have found a place. Primus, it is very strange. Human beings dwelt there once, but now it is overgrown with weeds. What did you find there? A cottage, and a garden, and two dogs. They licked my hands. Primus and their puppies. Oh, Primus, take them in your arms and fondle them, and think of nothing and care for nothing else all day long. And when I am there in the garden, I feel there may be something. What am I for, Primus? I do not know, but you are beautiful. What? Primus? You are beautiful, Helena, and I am stronger than all the robots. I am beautiful. Of what use is it to be beautiful? Look, 
Your head is different from mine. So are your shoulders and your lips. No one else feels to my touch as you do. Do you not sometimes feel your heart beating suddenly, Helena, and think how something must happen? What could happen to us, Primus? Look at yourself. <laughs> Laughter? Laughter, human beings. Who has returned? Who are you? The robot Primus. What? A robot? Who are you? The robot is Helena. What? You are timid and shy. Let me see you, Robotus. Sir, do not frighten her. <laughs> what? You would protect her? Laughter, timidity, protection. I must test you further. Take the girl into the dissecting room. Why? I wish to experiment on her. Uh, upon... Uh, Helena? Of course. Don't you hear me? Or must I call someone else to take her in? If you do, I will... Kill me. Kill me, then! What will your future be? Sir, take me. I made on the same day as she is. Take my life, sir. No! No, you shall not! Wait, girl, wait. Do you not wish to live, then? Not without her. I will not live without her. Very well. I will use you. Into the dissecting room with you. Primus! Primus! <laughs> oh, child, child. You can weep. Tears. What is Primus to you? One Primus more or less in the world? <laughs> what, what does it matter? I will go myself. Where? Into the dissecting room? Yes. In there. T to be cut. Let me pass, Primus. Let me pass. You shall not go in there, Helena. If you go in there and I do not, I will kill myself. I will not let you. Man, you shall kill neither of us. Why? We... We belong to each other. Go. Adam. Eve. The world is yours. The Merrimack Theatre Workshop has presented as the 279th production in our 54th theatrical season, Karel Chapek's famous story of the robots, R.U.R. The Merrimack Theatre Workshop is arranged and directed by J.M. Raboya with assistance by Nathan Meesey and Abigail Cockerham. Your comments, suggestions, and criticisms are always welcomed by the workshop staff. Next week, STLCC Merrimack Theatre will be hosting online auditions on February 24th and 25th for our next production, Connection Current. Contact Keith Oliver at koliver at stlcc.edu. This is the STLCC Merrimack Theatre Broadcasting System. <laughs>